the installation of SQL Lite 3 just couldn't get any easier than it already is. Well, actually, there's one way it could get easier. It could get easier if it's already installed on your machine, which is one thing I always recommend people check just before they do an installation of any tool to see if SQLite's already installed on your machine. And it often is because it's so light. Uh, all you have to do is open up a terminal window and type in SQLite 3, click enter, and hopefully nothing comes up. Well, that's a lot of red ink there. Reminds me of my grade 12 English paper. A couple of things to point out. One L, people are tempted to put two L's in there and you get of the number three at the end. Now, trying to get this to fail, that's not so important. But when we try and get it to work, it is. So how do you install it? Well, the first thing you got to do is just mosey on over to the SQLite download page. And then you got to pass by the Android download, the Mac OS download, the Linux download. And there is the ugly stepsister of all the great operating systems, the Windows download. I'm going to download the 64-bit DIL. And I'm also going to download the bundle of command line tools. And it just takes a second to download. You can see it's like, what, four megs in size, one meg in size. It is nothing. This is light. I'm just going to extract those files right here. Now, of course, I'm not going to set up those files there. I'm going to copy them. And you can see it's like five files in exe file, SQL light. 3.exe, be careful about the naming there. A couple of dills, that's about it. Now, I often see people create an SQLite folder on their root drive. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm gonna create a new folder called SQLite3, and I'm gonna put that in my tools folder. You can see there's a, a friendly little Postgres uh, folder in there as well. Looks like SQL Server 2022, but not to be outdone by this SQL Lite folder as well with some really good SQL Lite goodness inside of it. Now, I'm going to copy that folder name because I've got to add that folder to my, I was going to say class path. Uh, that's a, a Java term. Maybe it's just my operating system path. So I'm going to say edit the system environment variables. A lot of people look at this uh, on the, the left-hand side, the Windows Start menu. I'm not using Windows 7. It's just a little fun little tool that I installed that makes my computer look like Windows 7. Just makes me feel young again. Okay, we need to set up some environment variables here. Specifically, we need to edit that path. So I'm going to find the path there. I'm going to hit that edit button hard. I want to add something new. And you know what I'm adding. Boom. All of a sudden, I am adding that SQL Lite 3 folder. I'll click apply. I'll click OK. I'll click OK. I'll click apply. Then I just mosey on over to my terminal window, my PowerShell, and I keep my fingers crossed and I type in SQL Lite 3, remembering there's only one L and there's got to be one 3. I type enter and Boom, all of a sudden it says, you know what? SQL Lite is successfully installed, version 3.46.1. Now I can go ahead and I can create a database. I can create a table. I can do inserts on SQL Lite. I can do updates and deletes, all of the CRUD operations. And that is what we're going to do next. After I exit out of here, and that's actually one of the questions I get. How do you exit out of SQL Lite when you've gone into it? Just type dot exit and boom, once again, you get your command prompt back. But creating tables, creating databases, doing some CRUD operations, that is what we're going to do next. To do CRUD operations with SQLite, the very first thing you need to do is install SQLite, which we have just done. Then the next thing you want to do is actually create a database. Now, I actually ran the SQLite 3 command here to verify my installation. It says, we made a transient in-memory database. And what I want to do is I want to make a, a real database on my hard drive. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to do the mcdir command and just create a, a directory off my C drive called db. I'm not very creative. I'll cd into that db folder. And, you know, I could have actually just gone over here and maybe opened up a 
bash shell in the terminal window, but I got to be cool. And after opening up that folder, I'm just going to type in SQLite 3 to start SQLite 3. Again, 1L, got to have that number 3 on there. And of course, all this has to be on your path for your operating system for it to work. And now that I'm in there, I'm actually going to issue this command, dot open, got to have the dot in there. And let's open up a to-do database. I've got a number of tutorials in Python and JavaScript creating that uh, uh, traditional to-do application. So let's prototype that. We've just opened up the to-do database. Now, I don't know, did it really get created there? One way to find out is just type in dot databases and that tells you that, hey, you know what? There's a, a read write database right there in the C underscore DB to-do folder. Now I'm from Missouri. I like to be shown these things. When I go to that folder, well, SQLite is not a liar. That file is right there. There's the, the database right there. So all cool stuff. Now, what else can you do with this database? Well, maybe you want to create a table, right? And, uh, databases are a lot more fun if they got tables in them. So let's do a create statement. So let's create a table. I'm going to call it tasks. And I don't know, the ID field will be of type integer, which will be the primary key. And uh, we'll also have a name field, like every to-do, every item in the to-do list has a, a name. You know, we got to learn Spring, we got to learn Python, we got to learn Mojo. And that will be the uh, var char type. I'm not even going to specify the length of the var char type. I'm just going to live dangerously here. I'll click enter. And apparently the table was created. Do you believe me? Dot tables. We'll see if we're liars or not. And there you go. Tasks was created. In fact, I can even go in here and say, hey, let's look at the schema for that tasks table. And when I do that, it says, well, the schema has a whole bunch of ID and name fields configured. So this is pretty cool. Well, if you've got a database and you got a table, well, you know, it's time to do some CRUD operations, right? So why don't we do that? Why don't we do a little insert? Let's insert into tasks. I don't know, uh, something with a name. We'll ask the, the tool to create a primary key for us. I'm going to say values and we'll say, hey, let's learn Python. Everybody's learning Python these days. And, you know, one of the things I don't like about about this tool is it requires you to spell things correctly. And I'm hoping they're gonna fix that in the future. But um, there we go, apparently that inserted that information in. If I click the up button, um, that command will appear again. And let's say learn Java, and let's insert that again. Now, again, I don't know, was that inserted? Do you think it was inserted? Well. You know, we can always do that good old select bug slat from tasks and that bug splat there, the asterisk will tell us, hey, something went wrong. What did you do? By the way, I do this all the time. You got to have a semicolon at the end of every line. And if you don't, you get those three dots and the arrow just there to punish you. I'll throw that semicolon in there and it'll say, you know what? You spelled the name of your database wrong. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I was just, just testing to see if it was paying attention. So select star from tasks, put the semicolon in, and boom, we've got two records which seem to match the two inserts that we did into SQLite, learn Python and learn Java. Now, CRUD has four letters in it, right? Create, retrieve, read, result set. I don't know what it is, but I know that it's the letter R and uh, we've done two of them. So we've done the create, we've done the retrieve. Why don't we do an update? And you know, people should be learning Python. They should be learning Mojo, the language uh, set to upset the whole Python landscape. So let's do an update here and tell people to be smart about their careers and stop learning p Python and, you know, start learning Mojo. So let's do the update here where we said learn update task and set the name equal to learn mojo where the name field equals learn python exclamation mark semicolon 
Okay, now did that work? Well, select star from tasks can let us know. And there we go. It looks like we have updated that field now. Let me see, crud, C, R, U, D. There's always the delete. Should we delete everything? Well, we could just say delete from tasks, put that semicolon in, click enter, and again, I'm from Missouri. I like to be shown these things. And select star from tasks shows me that there's nothing there. So there you go. That's how easy it is to do CRUD operations with SQL Lite. Now, there is actually a GUI tool that you can use for this. There's a, a few. There's the SQL Lite viewer. Um, there's the browser downloading the browser, showing you how to use that to issue SQL statements and take a look at your database. That is what we're going to do next. If you don't have a neck beard, you probably don't enjoy doing SQL at the command line, which is why I always download the DB browser for SQL Lite. It's a real simple download. Just head over to their site. There's a few options. I just download the zip file. There's an installer, but I mean, let's face it, installers are for losers and the zip file just downloads in a matter of seconds. I'm just gonna extract it to my local file system, open it up, and then you'll see there's the executable file right there that you can open up and play around with your SQLite 3 databases. Now, one thing I will mention, obviously, you want to put this in a more respectable spot on your file system. You don't want to leave it in downloads here, but I'll let you figure out the right location for it on your own. You notice I can just double click and the tool's going to start right up. It's lightweight, it's easy to use. You do need to feed it a database though. And in a previous tutorial, when I installed SQLite, I also created a database in a folder unremarkably named underscore DB. And there it is right there. It's a little to-do database to help me create that Python or JavaScript or Java to-do application. As you can see, the database has been opened up. I just have to point to the file on the file system that represented the database. And it says, hey, there's a bunch of tasks in this database. And I'll be like, really? Well, maybe I'll browse all of those files. And it's going to say, well, there's actually nothing in there. And I'm going to be like, well, that's actually no good to me. So the next thing I could do is maybe run a little bit of SQL and see if I can insert something into this database. And I don't know, why don't we tell everybody to learn a little bit of Python. I'm going to click play there. It's going to say that, oh, apparently it got inserted. Maybe I'll tell everybody to learn some spring as well. So I can make a little change, click play and I don't know, maybe everybody should be learning Mojo as well. So I'll throw that in there for a third insert. Now, did all of this work? I don't know, I'm from Missouri, I wanna find out. So I'll throw in a little select star from tasks, click the play button and boom, there we go. All of a sudden, learn Python, learn Spring, learn Mojo. And I don't know, maybe we could even update this. We shouldn't be learning Python anymore. Python's days are numbered. We should only be learning Mojo. So why don't we tell people to get straight and learn Mojo. So we should do a little update there. This is the update statement. Now, did that actually work? I don't know. Let's see what happens when we do a select. Boom, that learn Python has changed into learn Mojo. Now, I guess the last thing we can do here if we want to complete the set of CRUD operations is just do that delete. I click delete, that should delete everything from the database, but I'm from Missouri, I need to be shown. If I click play here, I see there's nothing in there. So there you go. That is how easy it is to get a, a visual tool for SQLite. Now, that is a, a quick overview of SQLite, a quick SQLite tutorial. If you're doing Python development, JavaScript development, or Java development, I've got a number of tutorials on how to programmatically connect to SQLite. So if you want to dig deeper, check those out next.